All right, coaches. So what we are about to look at um, is going to be live or game action from Gonzaga and some of the concepts that we talked about in our last podcast about forcing confusion, taking advantage, number situations. We're going to look at that right now in this game film. We're going to break that down and see how Gonzaga goes about attacking in transition offense. They are one of the top uh, transition off offense in the collegiate game right now as we speak. I know they're ranked in the 91st percentile. They are getting about 1.89 points per possession in transition. Um, and they're one, of the, they're one of the top teams in offensive transition um, right now as we speak, which is a very exciting opportunity uh, to be looking at them and talking about them. Um, so let me, let me bring up some of their stats. Uh, they're ranked 30th um, in, in NCAA out of like 357, 357 teams. Um, and they are actually getting 1.195 points per possession. They've played 14 games. Um, they have, they score 57% of the time in their offensive transition and they're ranked in the 91st percentile in NCAA. Um, and this is why I think they're ranked number one besides they're playing great defense. They also are playing, they have a great offense, which allows them to have, I think, excuse me, a great defense. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, this is their game versus Portland. We got multiple clips, but uh, I'll go back from time to time. And so in the previous podcast, I was also talking about lanes and helping out your point guard. So if you're a coach that wants to do transitional lanes and you have sides of numbers, right? So I call this, you know, if you go from left to right, if you're looking at it, if you're on offense, looking at your, the backboard, um, it goes from lane one, the middle of the floor is lane two, and the right side is lane three. So one, two, and three. And the reason why I broke that down would be, for an example, is if my point guard got the ball in lane three, I do not want him to make a pass from lane three to lane one. He has to get to lane two to make that pass to lane one to shorten up the pass. Um, so that's why I really have lanes and then it allows, you know, accountability of, hey, you know, two runs to the two side, you're running lane one, three runs to the three side, you're running lane three. And my big man, whoever doesn't get the rebound is running lane two, you're running down the floor, uh, rim runner whatever the case may be. So if that's something you're interested in, something I'd like to do, go for it, add that to, to your package um, to help you out. But let's go ahead and look look at some of this film by uh, Gonzaga. So Portland has the ball, forced a long shot. So they got a rebound. So right now, this is where, like we practice this all the time. I know we practice this, right? Where, you know, the defense has to get back and usually they have, you know, the offense only has three guys. And, defense uh or or the offense has five guys defense only has four but if you look at as we let this play out right we 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 created pressure on the defense i think with the blowout pass right so we talked about the three series in our law our last podcast with the blowout attack and ignite that's why i think blowout is very important but what was very key about this is number three from gonzaga sprinted he is on a sprint. He is on a sprint and he's putting pressure and beating the defense down the floor. This now makes that transitional pass so much easier by just sprinting ahead of the defense. So he sprints ahead of the defense. There's one, two, three, and one. Puts pressure on the defense and gets a foul out of that. So that's one thing is sprinting down the floor, getting ahead of the defense. Next thing. Well, we'll stop it. So if we, we look at this right now, the numbers are two guys are already back for Portland. We have one, two, three, four, five. So right now, if we look at this, Portland actually has an advantage on the defensive side, right? They got three guys back. Two guys are still trailing to come and get in the play pitcher. And then everybody is still on the backcourt side on Gonzaga. But with sprinting, and creating that situation, right? We got two guys coming to the pitcher. We have one, two, three, but all of these three guys of Portland are up high. 
right? They're trying to figure out who has ball. So you create that confusion. And if it's a team that doesn't communicate, you get wide open shots, wide open layups. But if you, if we want to look at this, this may be a situation you might practice from time to time where you're in a four on three situation. You got a trailer coming in, stopping the ball. But with you sprinting ahead on offense and transition like Gonzaga is doing, you now put pressure on these three cats when the ball is up here, they got to find out who has ball. But if you look at this right now, Portland is looking at the ball and not looking around. So sprinting ahead causes that pressure. Forcing who has who has the ball, sprinting ahead, get to the paint, chance for a wide open layup. Again against Portland. Boom, they get it and they sprint. Zero second decision. Right now, Portland has an advantage with three. We have one, two, three, four on a sprint. And again, sprinting ahead of the defense. Great pass. Now the pressure is put on the defense, right? Creating that confusion, creating that pressure. And they still have the advantage, right? They are back. There's only one player technically back for Gonzaga. So it's really a three defense on two. The offense already has the ball passed out, but there's an advantage on the defensive side. Wide open layup, sprinting. Again, let's look at this against Portland, long shot. Boom, they get it and they sprint. Portland's gonna have about three guys back, but there's nobody sprinting on defense. Right now, it's a three on three look right here for Gonzaga. Three guys versus three. But with his extra pass and a zero second decision, he gets it, and he attacks. That's the zero second decisions that we are, we're talking about. We get a zero second decision, he then attacks. He either has to come over and help, he has to help, or he's gonna get a wide open layup. But with that zero second decision, didn't get to the help side in time, layup. And they do a phenomenal job of that. Long shot. They already have one, two, two, three guys right here in the backcourt. Gonzaga has all five players in the backcourt. They should have about three or four guys in the front court real soon. Portland has one, all five guys in the front court. And Gonzaga actually has three guys in the backcourt, four guys, um, if you want to consider that. But he just crossed the half court side. So right now, Portland is in a defensive advantage compared to the offense. And so right now, get a quick pass. It's a zero second decision, right? We, we, it created the confusion on the defense, right? The zero second decision allowed Gonzaga to actually take advantage of the lack and poor communication from Portland. Zero second decision, got in the paint, forced help, um, but there was a big miscommunicational piece by Portland that allowed this easy layup, right? They're trying to scramble, talk it out, but with sprinting ahead, being a shooter, spreading the floor, um, you, you create confusion on the defense with that extra pass, zero second decision, you get into the paint to create, to make some good things happen. He gets into the paint, wide open layup, make good things happen. 